Hey you guys, I gotta go real quick, but before I do, I wanted to make sure you guys got this video uh, as we're starting this conversation on faith. Uh, my son is in here, so you're gonna hear some background noise, but I don't care. I'm welcoming you into my life. Now, the, the conversation we had is coming from the Fury and Friends show, uh, the episode one of season two, and we talked about living a life of faith after we got through watching the interview with Laban Reeves, where that was one of the themes. I hope you enjoy this conversation and look forward to more that are talking on the topic of faith. And I love that he also brought out a, a theme of faith and... Um, how life by faith is so important and walking by faith is, is integral to life. And, and the understanding that um, apart from faith, without faith, you can't please God. It's impossible yeah. to please God. And uh, that just got me stirred up after our interview. So I decided, okay, maybe we should take a couple minutes as we close down here um, and just go through one passage. Um, I say one because I was so stirred up that you guys, I think I'm going to do like multiple videos for maybe the rest of this week, at least in the live stream next week. So come back next week. Uh, basically, every Saturday morning here on the YouTube, you're going to have uh, some live content. I'll be doing a live uh, going through some more elements of faith as well. But today, I want to look at one of the, the stories of faith that really encourages me. And no, 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 it don't even encourage me. That's a lie. It challenges the heck out of me Yeah. when I see this. So this is uh, one of the, the most... Um, I don't know, important uh, transformation stories that we see in the Bible where you see um, the making of the Apostle Paul, essentially. So we've got Saul, who is a heavy persecutor of Christians, and he's grown up a, a Jew among Jews, right? He he studied, you know, uh, the law, and he knew it all to the T and was all about trying to make sure that it was followed. You know, if you would talk about legalism, Tammy, you mentioned that, like he was the guy, he was senior legalism, and he saw these people who were following the way as uh, disruptors of that, and um, he was on a mission to take them out. And then Jesus shows up and appears to him and he's blinded on the road to Damascus, right? Yeah. And so now in Acts 9, um, this is after that. And uh, the Lord's having conversations with both Saul, who's, you know, the original name of Paul, and uh, a disciple named Ananias. And uh, now we're, we're going to jump in here at this story where he's talking to Ananias. Uh, this is you know, uh, letting us in on the challenge that Ananias has. So you got to visualize who Saul is right now in the life of the disciples. Major enemy, major enemy. Okay. So let's read this. Uh, it says, now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Remember that Saul is blind at this point, and he's just kind of waiting. <laughs> uh, but Ananias answered. <laughs> so here, so, so the Lord just told him, go see that man the one who's been going after the Christians, right? Yeah. And and uh, I need you to lay your hands on him. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I would be like, oh, so lay my hands on him. Okay, let's go right. lay hands. I'm ready. <laughs> but it ain't that kind of lay hands. <laughs> Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. So he's like, God, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but that man saw like, he's a bad man. Yes. And he's coming here now with permission from on high in, in the church world right now to lock up anybody who's calling after your name. And yo, I'm one of those guys. Yes. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's see where this goes. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house and he and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, 
The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. So he leaned in to the call of God. Yes. And he uh, uh, was a part of this amazing transformation that, as we know, that uh, Paul or Saul went on to become Paul, the apostle Paul, mm -hmm. who then went on to write the majority of the New Testament. Yeah. Right? There's so, so much that God used him for, but, but it, it all hinged upon the faith, the faith that they had. And I, and I love though, that one of the things that uh, he pointed out about uh, Saul's journey is that I'm going to show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So he's, so there's one of the things that I think sometimes is interesting in uh, evangelistic conversations where there's this uh, appeal to all of the blessings that you'll get in following Jesus, right? Oh, yeah. like, I mean, I even saw recently Steve Harvey, you know, and talking about prosperity and sounds like he's definitely all in the prosperity gospel, but like all these people like, oh, you'll get these blessings, da, 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 da. But I don't, I don't see that as what God's saying is the prescription for Paul in yeah. his uh, salvation story. Exactly. He said, I'm going to show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Yeah. And, yeah. and at the same time, he's now inviting Ananias into a situation that it sounds like, man, suffering might be ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you're yeah. uh, you're calling me into something that sounds crazy. I mean, Saul was essentially like Osama bin Laden in the minds of the disciples. Oh, yeah, you know? for sure. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if God right now called you to go pray for like the leading terrorist of the world? <laughs> like, uh, no. <laughs> I, but I do love that Ananias was like, listen, I'm not sure if you heard about the situation here. But yeah. then he went, because I think sometimes there's like this like myth that every Bible hero is just like, I will go forth. It's like, hold on a minute, Lord, let's discuss this for like two seconds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, but, you know, he still went in faith that the Lord was with him and he yep. was chosen to go and pray for Saul. Yeah. And I love that you even use that word chosen because Paul was chosen for the suffering yeah. of the gospel. He was chosen for that. And, 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 and the truth is when God calls all of us, he's choosing us yeah. for suffering yeah. to a degree that yeah. come on. He says, pick up your cross yeah. and follow me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could be more clear yeah. <laughs> when he says, deny your flesh. <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah, there's, there's, there's yeah. the suffering. There's and I think suffering. that's why people get so sometimes discouraged because they're like, oh, I'm not being blessed. And so some, mm -hmm. I must be doing something wrong. It's like, that's really not what it's about. Right. I mean, as followers of the Lord, there is a lot of suffering that goes yeah. on. There's blessings, but, Absolutely. There, but, but Absolutely. there are some sufferings too. <laughs> and, and the question that we all have to wrestle with as we are in Christ is, do we have a faith mm -hmm. that is willing to suffer? Yep. Do we have a faith that's willing to suffer? And when we talk mm -hmm. about that's living good. by and walking by faith, yeah. That's that's living with the understanding that we are like in the shadow of the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, living with the understanding that we are walking <laughs> we are walking on our way towards death, following the one who sacrificed it all. Right? <laughs> that's that's what we, that's what we say we're following. Yeah. That's that's where it goes. <laughs> now, there's the eternal life, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that as well, but you don't get to eternal life Yes. Without going through the death, yes. <laughs> we have we have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
Yeah. <laughs> this thing sounds great. <laughs> 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 it is. Yeah. Wow. But that do we have a faith that is willing to suffer? That yeah. is the question <laughs> of the day. <laughs> and do we? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So it's like, what kind of faith do we have? Yeah. What what kind of faith do we have? Well, you guys, before it gets too loud in here, I just wanted to sign off and say goodbye. You can see my son bouncing around in the background. If you're on the podcast, you got to check it out on the YouTube. This is my world that I try to persevere through. Hey, I'll see you guys back here next time. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Subscribe, like, you know, join the Patreon, freedomstorymedia.com forward slash support. I'll see y'all back here next time. Peace.